October is here. Can you believe it? You know, when I think about October, three things come to mind. Scary costumes, bags and bags of candy, and strategic business planning for next year. Am I right? I mean, pretty soon you'll be sitting down to put together goals and plans for 2022, or maybe you've already started. Either way, you're in the right place. You're listening to the right podcast. We are halfway through a two-part series that will help. Brett Jennings is sharing the one-page strategic plan that helped him break through when his business hit a ceiling many years ago. Today, Brett is a Homelite Elite agent, and his team is doing more than double the business they were back then. Cool thing is, you can use this exact system and one-page strategic plan too. But first, let's finish learning how it all works. This is The Walkthrough. Hello there. How are you? My name is Matt McGee. I'm the managing editor of Homelite's Agent Resource Center. Welcome to The Walkthrough. This is a weekly podcast. New episodes come out every Monday. This is the show where you'll learn what's working right now from the best real estate agents and industry experts in the country. At Homelight, we believe in real estate agents, and we are on a journey to find out how great agents grow their business, stand out from the crowd, and become irreplaceable. You met Brett Jennings last week in part one of this series. Brett formed his team back in 2011. They had a great first year, 50 plus deals and more than a million dollars in GCI. But they hit a ceiling, same production in both year two and year three. I asked Brett, how did it feel to have no growth for three years? Frustration. You, you set this milestone for a big goal. And, uh, you know, as, as real estate agents, once you've made a good income and a good life, then you start setting your heights on a higher vision that that was, okay, the million dollars, you know, gross commission income. And uh, I, I remember just feeling like I hit a plateau. I was giving it all I had, but um, I just couldn't seem to find, you know, that next level. Um, I got stuck right there at that, at that million dollar mark. It was frustrating. Today, Brett's team is doing more than double the business they were back then. And it's still just Brett and five other agents. Instead of 50 deals and a million in GCI, today they consistently do more than 120 deals and 4 million in GCI. And as I said earlier, he's a Homelite elite agent. That means he's in the top 1% of agents on our platform. But that's not all. Brett formed a brokerage in 2019. The brokerage is also using this same planning system, and they're on pace to do more than a billion dollars in volume this year. Sure, it helps that home prices are high in Silicon Valley. I get it. But look, that's a huge number no matter where you're doing business. Now, last week, Brett told us what changed. He started focusing more on vision and strategy than tactics. He started using a system called EOS, the Entrepreneurial Operating System. It's about creating a vision and learning how to execute on it. With EOS, you ask yourself eight questions, and then you use your answers to create a one-page strategic plan. That is what helped Brett and his team break through that ceiling we've been talking about. Now, we covered questions one and two last week in part one of this series, but here's what we're going to do. Normally, I would pick up part two right where we left off in part one, but I really want to make sure that you hear all eight questions together to help you with your own planning. So today, I'm going to repeat a bit of last week's show. We're going to start with questions one and two to keep everything together. One last reminder, Brett has shared two documents for you to download in our Facebook Mastermind group. One is an actual one-page plan that his team used a few years ago. The other is a blank template that you can use for your own business. So maybe have that handy as you listen. I do think it will be helpful. All right, let's dive into part two. Brett is going to walk us through the eight questions and how to create your own one-page strategic business plan. The eight questions that really crystallize the vision in EOS are, first, like what, what is your core purpose and core values? And for, for me personally, like the, the most powerful part of that, it was doing this eulogy exercise, right? Like going to the end, you start with the end of mind, go to the end of your life, and what are people saying about you? And then you can back into really 
Um, what are your core values? Um, and that's what, what I found was. Um, from there, we asked, what's our core focus? And um, for us, we came up with our purpose was a better life through real estate for our clients, our partners, um, and the agents we work with. And then a vision. Uh, what's the vision for the business? And for us, it was to be you know, the brokerage of choice for the consumers and agents in the markets we serve. And that we, we partner with talented agents, leverage them with proven marketing, personalized coaching, and administrative support so they can increase their profitability and quality of life. Um, so one core thing in that core focus, it has to be bigger than you and it has to not be about you. <laughs> Um, that that's one kind of key thing about it. Brett, when I hear core focus, core values, it sounds like a mission statement. Is it more than that though? Yeah. So the difference, so that, that's interesting. Cause like, you know, I'd read business books before and you, you know, you see right. companies with their core, core values on them. And when we actually did this process, what we uncovered and we discovered, it really is a process of uncovering what your core values are. You can't, these aren't things you can copy and paste. There's two types of core values. There's core values that, that what they call embodied, means what you already are. And then there's core values that are aspirational. Really what, when you go to, to, to facilitate this process for yourself and your own business and, and, and what you want to do, um, you'll get together with the people in your team and you'll ask the question like, hey, if, if we look at the best attributes of all of our players on this team, like what's awesome about so-and-so, you know? And maybe it's Michelle. Michelle's hardworking. She's diligent. Like she owns it. And, and we go through each team member and write down what are the, the most compelling positive attributes about them. And we start to distill these down and look. look and actually, there's even technology. You can use something called a word cloud where you enter in and the frequency of the words used increase the size of the word. But, but what's cool is um, you go through and you take these positive attributes and you find the most common positive attributes of your team members. And you look at those um, and those are what are your embodied core values. And we, then we ask the question, if there's anybody who's come into your world and left, either they left by their own choice or you, you let them go. What was it that they didn't have that wasn't, you know, that, that caused that relationship to not be right? Because ultimately, when you go to create a company and you find out what these core values are, there are things that you hire for and fire over. Um, and so these people come into and will leave your world because of them. That's why they're core. Brett, what would be a good example of a core value, right? Because like, you know, everyone says great customer service <laughs> yeah, is a yeah. core value. Is that, is that good or, or does it need to be more than that? It a hundred percent has to be more than that. And here's what I mean. Um, oftentimes like what we see espoused as, company core values that you might've seen when you walked into Costco or somewhere, <laughs> things like integrity or customer right. service. Um, these are things that I would refer to, we call platitudes, right? And platitudes are, if you could, you can end the sentence and say, well, I'd hope so. Like for example, integrity shouldn't be a core value. It's, it's table stakes. It's, I would, I would hope so that you got integrity because I wouldn't even want to consider doing business with you otherwise. Um, and the core values aren't necessary. They're not, not for customers, really. I mean, they, they become part of the value that you deliver to your customers. But the core values, as, as in this context, for the purpose of EOS, it's really core to who you are. And as I talked about, as I talk about these are embodied values. These are, these are the things that you and your team are being. These are the awesome things. These are the, like the X factor. It's unpacking the X factor of what, already makes you successful. And we find that out by taking your team, getting them together and, and, and doing an inventory of like, what's awesome about so-and-so, but what's awesome about Mary? Like, well, Mary's hardworking. She's diligent. She owns it. Um, she's exceptionally caring about people. And so you do this kind of as what I call a 360 and do a round robin with your team members. And you'll see the things that pop up where multiple there's redundancy where these things start to show up again and again. And then that blue, ah, those are some of your core values. And then by the flip side, the other thing of core values are, are things that you won't stand for or you won't tolerate. And so if you've had you know, agents, team, staff that have come into your world and you've let them go, um, what was it about that person that, um, you know, wasn't, that, that they didn't have? And that's, what you, that's when you really get to what is core. And when, when you get clear on that, it's powerful. It's powerful. Um, and, and, and then you, what you want to do is just make that present 
for, for your people so that you continue to live into it, but also new people coming into the organization, see it, feel it, and live into it as well. Okay. So core values, question number one, what are my core values? Question number two, what is the core focus? What comes after that? Let's, let's, let's go back to question number three. Question number three is what's your 10 year target? And I can tell you when that, when I first asked this question of myself, I was like, 10 year target. Like, I don't even know if I want to be in real estate for 10 years, but, <laughs> but nonetheless, it, nonetheless, uh, I'd followed through with the exercise, you know, if I throw a dart out into the foreseeable future, 10 years. I said, I don't know, like maybe we're selling like, you know, a billion dollars worth of real estate. Um, and we're helping, you know, how many hundreds of families. And so what's, what's magical about that is <laughs> I'm chuckling because those things actually happen. We've been using the the this planning process for for five years, and you know we have a company now that will sell over a billion dollars in real estate. Wow. And I, I quite literally couldn't have imagined, quite literally couldn't have imagined that we would do that. But this question asked me to imagine, yeah. and it actually <laughs> happened. So it's 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 pretty amazing what can happen. It, 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 you put out this 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 incredible number. You're like this is just like a total pipe dream. And then it actually, and then it actually comes comes to fruition, and then it comes to fruition. So that's the third question. The fourth question is, what is your three year picture? And this is where things really start to come into focus. And and that the three year picture is, you know, most people, if you think, okay, fast forward three years in my life, what's it look like? Feel like what's my business? What could it look like? Um, and there you you can. Pick a goal and then start backing into it with numbers. For for us at the time, I think it was a team doing 150 million in sales. So then we just had to figure out, okay, if home prices are averaging a million dollars, that means if we're going to sell 150 houses, okay. And if we're going to sell 150 houses, a good agent on the team will sell 20 houses a year. I'm going to sell 30, okay. So I need about like you know uh, six agents to do that. And you start backing in and and building out. Um, uh, this picture through numbers, you paint by numbers essentially, and um, from there, uh, you're also providing some qualitative things. What does this company look like? What does it feel like? What is it? What is it like to work there? Uh, for us, you know, it was helping 150 families create a better life through real estate. We had six partner agents that were earning 200 to 300 thousand dollars a year with work life balance. Um, you know, our agents were respected as some of the best in the business. So you, you start to develop some, some qualitative aspects of this and really just begin to crystallize this vision. So that's what the fourth picture is. Now that's all on one side of this strategic plan. Um, the, the other side really is your, your one-year plan. And that's where a question where we start with question five is what is your one-year plan? And as we stated in the beginning, we start this thing with starting with the end in mind. Your one-year plan it comes together by looking at your three-year picture and saying, okay, if we want to be there in three years, what absolutely has to happen in the next 12 months to set us up to get there? Um, and, and, and you do the same thing. You paint by numbers. Uh, and then add um, basically five or six key things that need to happen. You know, do you need to hire a new assistant? Um, do you do? Will you need a sales manager? Uh, what are what are the pe- the key people or the key resources? Do you got to create a, a great listing lead generation campaign to get there? Whatever those things um, might be to determine what's good, what's it going to take to get to that three year on time. So you're you're. What you're doing is setting out, you know, here's what here's what things are going to look like, what we want them to look like in 10 years, what we want them to look like in three years, what we want to look like in the next year. That vision, then, because you have it codified, you have it written down, it's on your sheet, it becomes easier to execute on it. That that be, sort of becomes your guidepost, right? It, it, it does. The, 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 the front side of your pick plan with EOS, your one-page plan, the front side is really your vision, the, t- the 10 year and the three year picture. It's pretty far out in the future. The back side becomes your one year and then what we call your 90 day world. So the 90 day world is really w- where the magic in this plan happens because people set goals oftentimes. You know, they'll set goals for the year. The problem is they never revisit their goals. They sit in a journal in a drawer or on a, a file on their computer and they're, they're not revisiting them on a regular basis. So what really makes this plan come to life is 
a 90 day period of time is, is a period of time where um, you can actually get a lot done. You're getting more done than simple tasks. You know, you're really working on some projects that, and that's what it takes to build a business. You know, a business becomes typically a system of systems. It's people, it's systems, it's data, and our business, it's leads, um, and, and we deliver a service. But putting those things together takes time, but in the 90-day world, it's manageable. So that sixth question um, is really what are the quarterly priorities? And this is the difference uh, that really came about for me, Matt. I told you in the beginning that I used to go to these seminars and workshops and I'd have this yellow legal pad with 50 right. ideas on it. You know, the problem <laughs> is I come home and I try to do it all. And, you know, when you try to do it all, you don't get very much done. Um, and if we only pick five, we probably could go pretty deep with those five. And that's what we're looking for. In the 90 day world, we're looking for, you know, three to five, what we call rocks or priorities that if we um, implemented those, uh, and, and got them done, that it would really move us towards the one-year plan. And so that becomes the question um, number six there. When you're doing the quarterly planning, do you also have to take into account, though, just sort of the, you know, diff- the different ebbs and flows in your market? Yeah, absolutely. And that's why um, the 90-day world is, is becomes relevant because, you know, you, <laughs> you can have a great plan at the beginning of the year, but if the market shifts or changes, how do we adopt or change that plan? And and 90 days is a frequency enough where we can still keep these kind of medium-sized projects or bigger projects in play, but we can also pull our head up every 90 days and say, okay, what's changed and how do we need to adopt or adapt, uh, you know, over the next 90 days to get to where we want to go. And, and that, that, um, kind of leads us to the the eighth question in the eight questions of, of EOS in the, in the strategic plan is what's your marketing strategy? Um, and that really becomes a matter of figuring out who's your target market, you know, uh, who, who is your target market. And it's, it's very important because you want to develop all your lead generation strategies around them, not just buyers and sellers, but what types of buyers or sellers. Uh, for us, we, we felt like we had our best traction and enjoyed the most working what we call entry level luxury. These are people who, you know, were smart, they were in tech, they appreciated kind of our progressive approach to real estate. That became our target market. Also in the marketing strategy is uh, determining what are the three unique things that you do differently um, than other people. In sales, they call it a unique selling proposition. And so, you know, what, what are those things? And then lastly, um, kind of, is there any part of your business that's proven in real estate? Oftentimes for listings, you, you, there's a value proposition about a guaranteed sale. We can't sell your house, we'll buy it. Or can't sell your, we can't sell your house, we'll, we'll sell it for free. Determining what those things are. Do you know someone who has a great story to tell? Or is someone who has a real estate superpower they can teach other agents? They should be a guest on The Walkthrough. Whether it's you or another agent you know, we're always looking for new guests to join us. Think about what you would teach if you were asked to lead a class for the agents at your office. Send names and topics to walkthrough at homelight.com and tell us why you want to hear them on the walkthrough. So do you have your one page strategic plan template handy? You can get that download in our Facebook mastermind group. You can also grab Brett's sample plan from a few years ago. I think having those in front of you should make this episode easier to digest. You just heard Brett say that question number eight of the eight questions is what is your marketing strategy? If you are taking notes, you probably know that was really question number seven. Brett and I caught ourselves. We realized that we had skipped one, and you'll hear us fix that in just a moment. For now, let's get back to the conversation. Brett was just talking about your marketing strategy. He said that it should include three things that make you unique. I asked him to expand on that. Can you talk more about the the unique proposition thing? I mean, I've I've consulted with all kinds of small businesses over the last 20 years. And whenever the USP idea comes up, that always seems to be an area where they struggle with. I know agents that real estate agents that are struggling it, with it as well. What makes me unique in my market? How did you deal with that question? How did you come up with what makes you unique? That's a that's a that's a great question. So I think marketing is a skill set that like any agent could could hone in on outside of the ability to sell is the ability to market. And that really, 
starts with like getting in the mind of the customer or the consumer and finding out what's important to them. And it's pretty universal among all sellers that all sellers, they want to sell for the highest price in the shortest amount of time with the least amount of hassle. And so um, we developed um, our unique selling proposition because we got really good at maximizing the value of people's property. We would do home improvements for them and we recognize, wow, when we put 20,000 into home improvements, guess what? We sold the house for $80,000 more. Um, in addition to a, a, a multitude of other things um, that we studied that had an impact on the price, we, we came up with, there were a hundred variables that impact the sale price of a home and that we have a market proven process to sell a home for up to 18% more than the methods of traditional real estate. So our USP is we have a market proven process to sell a home for up to 18% more. Um, and that, that what it was, what it was on the seller side for buyers. We're in a low inventory market. Most parts of the country now since COVID are all low inventory, but, um, for our buyers, it was access to, you know, off market properties or properties they won't find on Zillow or Redfin or the MLS. And we started basically cultivating or curating a list from investors, other top agents, uh, all their coming soon properties, And that became our unique value when we'd meet a buyer. Oh, great. You know, are you looking at off-market properties? Um, you know, no, what's that? Well, these are a list of you know up to 200 homes that we've curated from different sources that are not on the market. So you can get in there and potentially buy one and avoid a bidding war. So being able to create those value propositions and then clearly articulate them both in word and then in writing are um, super key to, to like, right, making your, your business successful. Or, yeah, I love that. That makes a lot of sense, Brett. So that covers, I think we did a pretty good job covering the marketing strategy question. There, I think there's one question left. What issues do you need to resolve along the way? Tell me more about that one. Yeah, so what issues do we need to solve along the way? Um, that actually is kind of an organic question and answer process. It's a Q&A that, that happens on a weekly basis as... Um, we meet with our team, our, our, our team to move this plan forward and check in on the projects that we're working on to drive forward towards the 90 day goal. Um, and in the beginning, you know, if you're a small team, it might be just you and your assistant and, and you're going through these projects. You're, you know, finding out like, where are we on each of these projects? What's in the way? Those become the issues. Um, when, when, when you're reviewing the plan, you write them down and then there's something called the issue solving track where you figure out what the problem is. And for example, it might be, yeah, the signpost didn't get up on 123 Main Street this week and the <laughs> client was like livid. And so the question is, all right, well, was that a that that, that ball drop? Uh, was that a, a people problem or was it a process problem? Did we, did we not have it on the checklist or did somebody forget to just check it off on the checklist? And by going through that process consistently and just honing it down, we just keep moving the ball forward down the, the field every week. And that's the last question in the eight questions of the US. You mentioned reviewing this weekly. Do you also have bigger planning meetings, you know, once a year, once every quarter? How does that work? So the, the beauty of this is one is its simplicity. And, and but what makes it comes to life is the cadence. Um, so the weekly meeting it moves you forward in the and on the ninety day world. So, but we create a ninety day world every ninety days. So we have a weekly meeting and it's like fifty two beats of the heart on a fifty two week year, right? That keeps blood flowing through your company as you're working on this plan. Then we've got the ninety day meeting that happens at the end or at the begin just before every quarter. We take one full day out of the business. There's a saying, you got to get out of the business to work on the business. Yep. So ideally we do it off site. Um, you know, find, find a, whether it's a conference room at a hotel or a boardroom at the country club, or, uh, you know, we've even done it at my kitchen table sometimes with the, <laughs> with the whole team just to get out of the office. Um, but, but a new environment, ideally an inspiring environment because it changes your thinking. You're just not in the day to day where you're inundated by the normal things that take you off track. To just focus and ask the questions, where where have we been? You know, what have we learned in the last ninety days, and what are the new projects that we're working on, or what projects are going to carry over from the last ninety days that we're going to work on this ninety days? Um, so that happens every ninety days, and then an annual meeting. The end, the beginning, just before the beginning of every year, we take two days, 
um, one full day to just kind of reflect. And usually we'll do a nice dinner out with the team, kind of celebrate what success we've created. And then we'll take the full day and, and go into planning uh, the next day. What I am hearing as you talk about the weekly meetings, the quarterly meetings, the the annual, you have to give this the time it deserves. 100%. Yeah. I, and I think that that was the difference maker for me as we started this conversation said, you know, as an agent creating success, you got to plateau and it just kind of got stuck. Um, that, that keeps um, success fresh and alive because you're constantly revisiting what is it that creates the ceiling that you hit? And then removing those obstacles or those issues so we can kind of just evolve to higher and higher levels of success. The cool thing that I really enjoy about the process, though, ultimately, is um, the, the path of setting and achieving goals it is kind of like a spiritual process, right? You're taking things that are just ideas in the ether, and then you put them on a piece of paper and you have people collaborate around them. Everyone's working on them. And then we all come pull our heads up every 90 days and we look at this and go, oh my gosh, look what we've created. And um, like I told you, as, as we went through this, this exploration together, that 10-year target was something we put on a piece of paper <laughs> five years ago and saying, you know, maybe somewhere in our wildest dreams, this might happen. But lo and behold, we're, you know, we're only five years into this and we hit that, that 10-year target. So it, um, for, for any of those you know, our people listening, if, if you've been building a real estate business and you've been at this game a while and, and you're just kind of not getting to which where you want to go, get an awesome coach, create a clear plan, and you will go to heights that you've never seen before. I probably haven't emphasized this enough so far, but you just heard Brett mention it. When he started using this system, Brett's 10-year goal was outrageous. He wanted to sell a billion dollars of real estate in one year. Just crazy talk. Now, only five years into the 10-year plan, he's going to do it. His brokerage is going to hit that goal this year. As we wrapped up the conversation, I asked Brett about that accomplishment. I asked you at the beginning how it felt when you were in that plateau, right? The three years where there was no growth. Since then, there's been a lot of growth, year four, year five. How does it feel now? Um. Man, it it's uh, it. I don't know how to describe. I mean, it literally feel like it, I literally. I mean, yeah. There's there's not a lot of words to describe it. Uh, it it's uh, huh. it's humbling. Honestly, it's humbling. It's humbling to do what you didn't think was possible, and to do it with a with a group of people. It, it leaves me in a place of uh, knowing that, what is it? It's not all me that's doing it. And when I say that, it's not just the people. There, there, there's, some, there's some other forces that are at play, um, you know, the benevolent, the divine, God, universe, whatever you want to call it, that, that, that gets um, activated here when, when you, you create a vision and, and you get people to rally around it and believe in a dream and make something happen. It's humbling. That's awesome, Brett. Thank you. Hey, listen, this uh, whole conversation has been fantastic. I always like to wrap up uh, at the very end of the show by doing a takeaway segment, kind of to recap my key points from the conversation. But let me ask you, what are your key points? What are your takeaways? What do you want my listeners to think about the most? The most fulfilling thing that I think, um, if I can inspire people to, to, to embrace this process, would be to see what happens to your business and your life when you create a compelling vision and rally other people around it and you focus on it week in week out quarter after quarter year after year uh and and the good and the benefit that it can bring to you the people in your company the clients you serve and, and this kind of positive ripple effect in delivering good in the world so i think it's been humbling and, and it's been amazing and i would never have thought we'd achieve we'd get to where we are you know if it wasn't for this process What an amazing story. This EOS system asks you to come up with an audacious 10-year goal. Brett did that five years ago, and he's already hitting that goal this year. I don't know. If that's not a great testimonial for this one-page strategic plan, I don't know what is. Awesome stuff. Thank you, Brett. You just heard Brett's takeaway right there at the end. Here are mine. This is what stood out to me 
from part two today. Takeaway number one, EOS asks you to answer eight questions as you create your one-page strategic plan. Let's go through the eight real quick. Number one, what are your core values? Brett said this can't be something like we provide excellent customer service. That's table stakes. That's not a core value. Number two, what is your core focus? Number three, what's your 10-year target? Brett's, remember, was to sell a billion dollars of real estate. Number four, what is your three-year picture? And then question five, what is your one-year plan? Question six, what are your quarterly priorities, the 90-day world? What needs to happen in the next 90 days to help you reach your one-year plan? Question seven of the eight is what's my marketing plan? And then the last one, what issues do we need to resolve along the way? Takeaway number two, what drives all this, what creates the traction that EOS talks about is the cadence. Brett and his team, they do weekly meetings to focus on the 90-day plan. Then they do quarterly meetings to review the 90-day plan and start a new one. Brett says these should be full day. They should be off-site if you can swing it. You want to get out of the business to work on the business. And then at the end, there's an annual meeting, two full days, At the end of the year, Brett says you celebrate and reflect on day one, and then you dive into planning on day two. Takeaway number three, go download the material that uh, Brett has provided and develop your own one-page strategic plan. There's a blank template for you to use and an actual plan that Brett used for his team a few years ago. That'll help you understand what it should look like as you work on yours. This is all available in our Facebook Mastermind group. You can also find Brett in the group, by the way, in case you have any questions uh, directly for him. So find the group by going to Facebook, do a search for Homelight Walkthrough, and the group should come right up. All right, if you have any questions or feedback for me, you can do that a couple different ways. Leave a voicemail or send a text. The number is 415-322-3328, or just send an email to walkthrough at homelight.com. That's all for this week. That's all for this series. Thanks so much to Brett Jennings for joining me. Thank you for listening. Hey, would you do me a quick favor? If you enjoyed this series, please rate and review us on Apple Podcasts or wherever you'd listen. I'd sure appreciate that. And hit that uh, follow button or subscribe, depending upon where you are. Either one. That way you get all of our future shows automatically. My name is Matt McGee, and you've been listening to The Walkthrough. At Homelight, we believe in real estate agents. We're on a journey to find out how great agents grow their business stand out from the crowd, and become irreplaceable. Go out and safely sell some homes. I'll talk to you again next week. Bye-bye.